Welcome, friends, to Unlocked. It is the world's number one Xbox show. Episode 305 for July 19th, 2017. It's the middle of summer. Still plenty to talk about. Uh, coming up this week, big news out of Bioware, a studio shift at the top uh, that uh, an old friend coming back to assume a new and bigger role. Plus, Kingdom Hearts 3 <gasps> gets a release window? <laughs> What's that? Very large yeah. window. Big window, but it's something. We've got some new features coming to Xbox Live and a lot more. A reminder that if you enjoy Unlocked, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash IGN Unlocked, or, and or pick us up on your podcast service of choice if you prefer the audio route. I'm Ryan McCaffrey. To my right, making her Unlocked debut from IGN's entertainment team in Los Angeles up here for the last couple days, Terry Schwartz. Thanks for having so me. So lovely to have you. I'm, I was very happy that you asked me to be on. You've yes. been like the, the Nick Fury of all the podcasts this week. <laughs> I have so been. Just been yeah, appearing. Here's a little bit of a background. Ever since I was the rare uh, uh, American person to be on the IGN UK show, I realized I was like, my new quest is to slowly appear yeah. on every single uh, IGN podcast. My oh, my white whale is Fireteam Chat. I will break <laughs> Destiny <laughs> Gary and Brent Arabella. It will happen. They, ha they laugh in my face at E3. I actually went up because I, for like, 30 seconds, Zach Ryan was like, hey, you're going to be on Fireteam Chat. And then he was like, nope, that seat's for a bungee person. And I walked up to Fran as they were setting up Fireteam Chat. And I was like, hey, so uh, Fran, you, you want me on it? You want me on it? He goes, Terry, this is uh, Deech. I was like, I've never met you before. Bye. Um, anyway, yeah. So I was so happy that you that you let me on. Absolutely. It's like my I have a bucket list of visiting every Major League Baseball stadium. Uh -huh. Yours is much Probably more fun and. Uh, but yours might be more achievable, Destin. <laughs> oh. Yeah. We'll make well, it happen. We can. Okay. Yeah, we'll just, we'll like, guys, we like, I'm just going to hide behind this desk and then they'll come in. <laughs> like, I won't make it to Comic Con. I'm just going to be like waiting here <laughs> for them to come in and just be like, you're live. I'm yeah. here. You can't leave me out. You're just <laughs> spinning. Like, <laughs> I like this plan. Yeah. Uh, come out yeah. with the cat, too. Yeah. 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 Just yeah. Come cat or yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. I was like, no, is there a live cat living in this room? Somewhere. <laughs> Anything can happen when San Diego Comic Con is happening because everyone's gone. Oh, yes, yeah, Marty Sleeva, always good to see you. <laughs> hey, good to see and you. And star of the IGN show on <laughs> Disney XD, Miranda Sanchez. Hi. Welcome back. Star, but good to see you. And that's TV. actually uh, I what I wanted to talk about real quick. Yes, just gonna gonna navel gaze here for a second. We're on television. Yes. Which uh, well, we're not on television right now. Miranda's <laughs> Miranda, on television. Miranda's Hi. on television. Did you know every that night we could all be on television if you have a Chromecast and then you stream it to your television and then. That's true. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I have a radio face, which is why I'm here, and that's and why you're on television as well. Well, that's the that's yes. that was the compens God's compensation. Yes, uh -huh. the, this, but then okay, all right, we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna help him out a little bit. So, if uh, you are watching us on Chromecast right now, <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> please tweet at Ryan McCaffrey. <laughs> yes, no, don't. Uh, so, Miranda. What is going on on the IGN show? It's uh, it's on Disney XD. They have a new nightly. Uh, sort of almost an Adult Swim ish yes. type of thing where it's it's like it's nighttime programming that's maybe not quite as uh, it's a slightly higher age demographic, right? Right, right. So starting at nine Monday through Friday, um, Disney XD becomes, as they say, Disney XP, which is like their games block. So it's us, and I think Waypoint has a show like that's kind of video game documentaries. Mm -hmm. Um, there's a show called Attack, and there's some esports thing. Don't plug really them. <laughs> but the most Fine. important thing you know is at 9:30 our show happens. 9:30 Eastern, 6:30 Pacific. Is that correct? Yes, no, as I believe. No. No. It's 9:30. <laughs> it's 9:30 wherever you are. Wherever you are. Okay, my bad. Like I... Two different channels, so it's Got like 9:30 it. okay. regardless. Gotcha. Um, but if you do not have Disney XD, which if you do, please watch it there. Um, but if you Ratings don't, are important. <laughs> yeah, like it just to support the show. Like we're doing this for Disney XD. So if you watch it, it might be totally a little different from what we do. It skews a little bit younger, but that's because it's for Disney XD. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's for that audience. Uh, but like I said, if you do not have Disney XD, you can catch it the next day it airs um, on the IGN mm -hmm. so Easy. Yeah, easy, easy. yeah. And the show is like, I mean, it's, it's, I watched, we watched the pilot yesterday. Yeah. Everyone did. Uh, and it's shot, a bunch of it's shot at the office. So you get a flavor mm -hmm. of what the office is like. Uh, there's a bunch of packages from events. We're doing stuff at Comic Con. There was stuff at VidCon, Anime Expo. I'm so excited for the Anime Expo yeah, stuff. Really cool. We worked really hard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, we worked really hard on all of this. So yeah. I really no, do you guys, you guys, will check uh, it out. you guys killed it. Yeah. We even snuck in a little, uh, some of the Destiny 2 IGN first stuff mm -hmm. we've got going yes. on. There was actually yeah. something that debuted on the Disney, on the, uh, the IGN show on Disney. Yeah. And that's, so. and that's, Part, the show is partly the reason Alana hasn't been on this show in 
a little yes. bit. Sorry, I'm preoccupied. <laughs> Rip. Yes, Rest indeed. But I just love that, you know, you have Hillary Duff, <laughs> you have Miley Cyrus, and now you have Miranda Sanchez, hey. Naomi Kyle. So did you guys know that I'm going to the second Miranda Sanchez on Disney? What? 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 Well, Elizabeth- but the best Miranda Sanchez on Disney. <laughs> and Lizzie McGuire, there's a character named Miranda Sanchez, and I'm just like, I got to reclaim my SEO. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so if you look at Miranda Sanchez Disney, eventually it'll be That's me. the most inside right. baseball thing I've That's ever really heard dumb. you say. <laughs> I've got to reclaim my SEO. I we appreciate trained you well. Because yeah. we were like... Oh, Miranda Sanchez, like Lizzie McGuire. I'm like, no, like me. I existed before she. Did. I like that. That's your lower third, Lizzie McGuire. Yeah. 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 McGuire. I appreciate the the personal quest to just <laughs> to just eradicate the the original yeah. Miranda Sanchez character. Yeah. Sorry, Lelaine, yeah. you're out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, let's get to it. There is a. a not a lot to talk about quantity-wise, but quality-wise, we've got a, a particular a couple of big stories this week, and I want to start with one that mercifully broke a couple hours before we recorded, yeah. instead yeah. of after. And we're which recording is what on always Tuesday, happens. usually. Yeah, yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's well. just it all it all came together for once, and that is a shakeup at the top. I don't want to shake up such a like National Enquirer yeah. way to put it, <laughs> but it is a a change at the top of Bioware. So Aaron Flynn, who'd been the studio general manager for the last uh, number of years, he has stepped aside. And replacing him is a very, very familiar name, Casey Hudson, who, if if you're like, I think I know who that is, he basically has worked on every major Bioware game up through when he left after Mass Effect 3. Most importantly, I mean, Mass Effect is Casey Hudson's baby. He was the project director on that series uh, and also... Where I first became aware of him, and was like, oh, this guy, this guy is clearly onto something. Star Wars: Knights of the Old Republic, the original, mm-hmm. was also his uh, his baby. So he will be taking over. What do we think of this? This is this is a uh, you know bringing bringing the old veteran back in yeah. to to lead the team. So he Casey left. What was it? Two or three years ago? And more, years, I, think I think a little, little yeah. more. And he yeah. went, and so he was his. The final thing he was working on were the early stages of what became Anthem. Yes, and then he left and went to Microsoft, and we never played any of his games. <laughs> yeah, so he was working on Hololens stuff. Uh, that was his. That was his thing there, and I'm sure he had his reasons. He had said he wanted to spend more time with his family, and I presume Hololens probably didn't involve a lot of uh, crunch time. No, <laughs> you know, because they're. It's just not how. Pl- Plus, you can wear it and also spend time with your family because you can see them as conquerors jumping <laughs> in your room. It's true. Conquer <laughs> Junior Marty. Ooh. Get it together. Yeah. He doesn't swear. Well, I'm curious, no F word. Ryan, this is a little bit of speculation, <laughs> but how much do you think the reception to Mass Effect Andromeda led to Aaron leaving and maybe Casey coming back? I'm glad you brought it up because, I mean, I, it sure, the timing of it suggests that even if Aaron lit, left of his own volition, I'm not, I'm not one to sit here and start rumors but i mean they just they just had a a very i don't want to call it disastrous showing because the game was good it was it was, it was decent the it just wasn't the problem is great. it was a mass effect game exactly yeah, Th- yeah. that's it that, that was so, the problem yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. so what i will say this is <laughs> for all intents and purposes let's phrase it this yeah. way mass effect's reputation was decimated yeah as a, and that that is that was arguably bioware's single biggest franchise yeah uh, since I mean the old Republic kind of churns along as their MMO out of uh, their Austin studio, although that's obviously a, a licensed IP. Star Wars, it's not mm-hmm. their franchise. And then Dragon Age has has had uh, three good entries, but I way too much Dragon Age Inquisition. Me like, too. Yeah. Every so single side IGN's quest. Game of the Year yeah. 2014. <laughs> yeah. 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 But Mass Effect clearly was that was the the when you thought of Bioware, you thought right. of Mass Effect. And uh, with with everything going as as south as it did, uh, with the release and the, the the glitches and the the choices and and you know all the things you can point to that we've hashed out a number of times on this show, I got to figure that that there was a conversation either either Aaron went maybe I should step aside, or maybe EA management kind of went. Maybe we should talk to maybe let's let's call up Casey and see if he's bored of this whole Hololens yeah. thing yet. And then maybe you know I'm 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 not suggesting I'm sure it, it's it was pretty amicable no matter what it was. Yeah. I'm not I'm not suggesting that Aaron was forced out, but the timing of this is uh, yeah. I'm curious to see how much of a creative reset this might 
caused whatever Mass Effect does next. You know what I mean? Because obviously Andromeda was them trying to do something different. It didn't necessarily work the way that they had hoped to. Like, mm -hmm. does he just fix what maybe didn't work about that? Or do you go back to sort of a new, different iteration yeah. of Mass Effect again? I, I mean, th just saying that they said they're going to put a big old pause in Mass Effect yeah. for a while. Right. So yeah. I don't think we'll know for... And so we don't know. Like, obviously... Uh, I think the game anthem is now that we saw at E3 is probably, I'm sure some of the skeleton of what he was working on three years ago is there, but game de the game development is iterative and this right. game is a very different beast than it was then. And so I have a feeling his thumbprint is, isn't is going to really be that heavily on anthem. I agree. Uh, but the question is what what's their next big thing? So what is is he going to be working on from the ground up? And is that going to be Mass Effect, or is that going to be something Star Wars related? Oh, he is the studio Your head, so yeah. he's probably not going to be directing yeah. any yeah. games right. again yeah. anytime soon. But you're right; he will absolutely have a he will leave a thumbprint yeah. Yeah. on everything from here forward. Mm -hmm. uh, I really think that uh, it'll, it could flip one of two ways. My first thought was, and we've said this before, but now it's like super actually true and possible. They made, uh, Bioware made Knights of the Old Republic, which is my single favorite role-playing game of all time. Uh, EA owns Bioware. EA has the Star Wars license. Yeah. And Casey Hudson is back at Bioware. Yeah. Maybe after, because so we know sort of it's not, and not we like, like we can't say anything, but it's pretty much from job listings and that 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 one the writer that oh yeah the the Dragon Age. we know yeah. Dragon yeah. Age is is in development yeah. for Dragon Age uh, four, so uh, I have to imagine that Anthem because it is a Destiny like game as a service, the development team on that's probably going to stay on that mm -hmm. project for a long long time, mm -hmm. which means what Bioware's next thing is probably going to be what it will be after Dragon Age four is done, mm -hmm. which probably won't be for a while because it's not even announced. Could could it be KOTOR 3? Here's my question, though, and why I think no. Can they? Disney owns Lucasfilm now, which they didn't when the first two were made. Mm -hmm, and really? it has such a tight fist on that IP that we know that KOTOR is not canon. Mm -hmm. And I don't think point. we're yeah. making that's anything a, that's, that's a non-canon yeah. Crushing Star my dreams. <laughs> I know. You were saying this, and yeah. I was like, no. But but <laughs> I mean, there are, so many, there are so many Star Wars games in development. Why not have someone like Casey help lead a Star Wars game that is spiritually yeah. similar to Coach, right. or even if it is not if within that reboot. universe. I mean, they could do that. A, a, a canonical mm -hmm. reboot. Or yeah. less, like, I don't know. It needs to be KOTOR in spirit, not necessarily in name or in era. Like, right. I, we don't need that Old Republic era to me to make a great game. And yeah, there are a ton of really interesting Star Wars games in development with uh, Amy Hennig's game and Battlefront 2 and uh, whatever, uh, uh, what's the, the Jade Raven's... Uh, one oh no that uh respawn's working on oh Sorry, yeah that uh, uh, on. yes thank you yeah that and so we assume that's a third person action game but none of those games are giant open rpgs right. that is, is true what bioware has been known for so yes if, in this post disney world i would love a giant open canonical game like and if this. you're and if you're ea and you've got wasn't it a 10-year licensing agreement i think they signed a couple years back yeah so you know you'd want to theoretically get the most out of that deal by creating as many good Star Wars games as you can yeah. in order to convince uh, Luke Disney to, to extend that license. Yeah. And, I mean, we've seen Disney do that with Marvel as well, right? They're like, we will partner with anyone who is a good, smart partner for mm -hmm. us. So you see in games like they have in Insomniac yeah. Spider-Man um, that's non-MCU, but but still like, you know, a good partner. Mm -hmm. And they have like so many different TV shows in development that I wouldn't be surprised if they were like, yes, we would love to have like a Bioware and Star Wars. Yeah. Game. It's yeah. funny you say that because that's exactly how KOTOR came to be in the first place. That was in the era when, uh, when Lucas Arts was making was making kind of crappy Star Wars games internally, and they finally went, "Why don't we just find some really cool developers and let them make yeah. Star Wars games?" And that's where Jedi Knight Two from Raven came mm -hmm. from, and that's where 
Knights of the Old Republic came from, from Bioware. What's interesting, too, is that uh, while Disney is sort of struggling a little bit with how to tell its side stories in movies, like with these uh, companion movies like Rogue One, and then Han Solo obviously has had some issues, and the Boba Fett one that, or if whatever Josh Trank was working on didn't end up being, um, they've done a really good job, I think, in games. We've yeah. seen that in, yeah. especially in Battlefront 2's yeah. story mode that is uh, b- taking place between Return of the Jedi and uh, Force Awakens from the Sith perspective. Yeah. That's that's very compelling and interesting. Yeah. And I think something they haven't gone back in mind again are like the old Republic yeah, days. Sure. That they day. could but but how do you do that? Have it be canon and have it not totally conflict so with what you already did with Kotor. My my question about that canon thing is can a, could a, a Bioware could Bioware even make a canonical game? Because the whole thing about a Bioware game is you ultimately define who your character is. So if my protagonist goes to the dark side and yours goes to the light side, those both can't be canon? I think they could do it. Yeah. Well, what about they could make- the Old Republic? Yeah, so, well, was that all ca- yeah, I guess that's is the Old Republic I think as canon. Long as you're no, not it's changing. not. It was deemed not. not canon. Oh, right. Yeah, which is but it the still problem. exists. <laughs> it, it still exists, but then again, like so do all the the well, expanded yes. universe. Well, it's not yeah. like they went out and hunted it down and burned it. Right. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> burned Can you imagine like yeah. a Star Wars book burning? Like, <laughs> like everything <laughs> that's not. <laughs> not Order <canon>. sixty six. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Order no. thirteen thirteen. Oh, still too soon. Still too soon. No, yeah, I think they could absolutely do something like that. Like, there's tons of narrative ways they can build on the canon without having and have like that player choice aspect without hurting the rest of the sure sure we've also seen them pull in things like thrawn and make them canon when they weren't so maybe they're just like hey welcome back casey we love kotor now everything kotor is canon like (laughs) make kotor three yeah So uh, there's still hope for you. Yes. Aaron <laughs> yeah. said there were separate blog posts, one from each person here posted on on BioWare's site today. Aaron said, "I've been contemplating changes in my own life for some time, but when I heard that Casey had confirmed he was up for the task, I realized the opportunities before us. I will be working with him over the next couple of weeks to help catch him up and do my part to set him up for success to be the best GM he can be." And then uh Casey said, I needed some time off, needed a bit of a change, and he's referring to when he left the studio a few years ago, and wanted to get involved in the new wave of disruptive technologies that were emerging. There's HoloLens. The last few years have been transformative for me, from having time to reflect on what I most want to do, to working with new technologies at platform scale. And now I'm thrilled to have the opportunity to return to lead Bioware, a studio that I think of as home. Uh, So, I... I do agree. I, I I was speaking wishfully, but I, I do agree that KOTOR 3 is probably pretty unlikely for a number of reasons. But I do genuinely think that after Dragon Age 4, uh, Casey won't be the project director, but I think that is when they will go back to Mass Effect. Mm-hmm. You guys think so? Or you think they'll... I think they have to go back. They yeah. will. And that, that will be long enough from now. Yeah. Because if Anthem is next year... Probably it's no. not. <laughs> That's spoiler alert. There's no way. I'm down. Ah, just like the next game we're going to talk about it next year, right? Yeah, uh, um, yeah right. Yeah, huh. yeah, but yeah, I, uh, yeah, yeah, I would imagine that they go back to Mass Effect after uh, Dragon Age. I wish Destin were here to freak out a little bit, but no, he bailed on the show <laughs> ah. because of the Destiny. Bit. <laughs> because he of his other really bad about this little thing you? called we yeah. finally can all play Destiny Two. Uh, this Except is for us, you know what I and doing <laughs> comic. Terry, I'm gonna, you don't talk over me. I like you better than Destiny. Yeah, <laughs> that, there was a lot of there was a lot of uh, Johnny Cross talk last week. Yeah, last week yeah. was uh, it's fun though. Yeah, it was fun. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Absolutely, this, fun. this is funny. Uh, we brought this up just as a weird aside. Like we, there's a thing at IGN where uh, people leave and then they do another job for a while and then they come back. Like Andrew Goldfarb left for a little bit and came yep. back. Scott Lowe, uh, Caleb Lawson. This happens a lot in games too. So this is like Corey isn't the first person to do this. Um, you had. Uh, Corey Barlog, who was the creative director of God of War 2, left, and he went to, I think, Crystal Dynamics, and then came back, and he's directing the new one. That's right. And we had Clint Hawking of uh, you know Splinter Cell and Far Cry 2 leaving Ubisoft, going to Valve, having a similar vacuum of, you're so creative, but I haven't seen a single thing you've done, and now he's back at Ubisoft Toronto. For all yeah. we know, he, like... 90% finished Half-Life 3 and then Valve went, eh, I forget have it. No <laughs> doubt that there are several nearly finished Half-Life 3s, uh, Half-Lives 3 out there. So <laughs> my many half lives. Yeah. Three lives. Yeah. My dream is that we will see the reveal of Half-Life 3 at Dota's International. International. 
because Gabe comes out and he says something at the, like the opening night and like there's a huge performance and like and I just want him to say oh yeah and Half Life Three is a thing and then just walk off just, and it's just drop them, but like. it's a MOBA yeah but then I'll be there and I'll be like Miranda what's going on I'm like I'm sorry I'm on vacation, Every, I'm on vacation. <laughs> I'm on vacation. everyone no, I'm just, just starts vomiting in the audience <laughs> yeah. when they say it's a MOBA it's like, oh. Oh, gosh, everyone would lose it <laughs> <laughs> all right uh, let's move on here to the other big story of the week from coming out of D23 yes. which. Uh, the LA team was was a big part of down there. Seemed like D twenty three was huge this year. Well, Disney doesn't f around. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Disney not. is like, we will own everything. Going back to the Lucasfilm of it all, we know how to give a good show, yeah. and they did. Like they closed out that panel. I was there. Like they closed it out with uh, with Kingdom Hearts three, I believe, and yeah. like that twenty eighteen thing that everyone I would say is very skeptical. But here's <laughs> here's my thing, right? People have been waiting for Kingdom Hearts three for what? 13 years since at Kingdom this Hearts 2, yeah. Yeah, since Kingdom Hearts 2, appropriately. Um, I'm teasing you. <laughs> oh, shut up. <laughs> I, I, didn't, I didn't pick up on it until you literally said it. I'm like, oh, but I mean, they, you've been waiting for so long. You don't need to reveal that date. Yeah. But you do. And yes, I think if they're like, listen, we need to wait until 2019 to make it that much better a game, like Breath of the Wild or something, you will. But like, you don't need to say 2018. I just but want then again, this is like my... Date. I don't want them to just play around. It's like, no, I mean, just tell us the real date. Yeah. And this if you don't is, have them, then don't tell us. If just, there's, just keep if there's one thing I've learned from Kingdom Hearts titles, is that numbers don't matter. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, 2018 doesn't yeah. matter. Very true. Yeah. yeah. I don't really believe it. And if it is 2018, it's be like late 2018. Yeah. I don't suspect them doing anything early. Yeah. And I really hope they don't because there's already a lot at the beginning of 2018. Now, I, I'm curious because so much has changed with Disney mm -hmm. since Kingdom Hearts 3 started development. And that was their big announcement. Too, yeah. Like with like, Pixar. Yeah. You know, the uh, D Disney buying Star Wars and now there's all this new stuff. It's like, I I wonder if this if Kingdom Hearts 3 is survives only because of some sort of pre-existing contractual we, agreement or if it's if there's actually this renewed energy going into it. I mean, what was unveiled was uh, Toy Story World, which looks incredible, by yeah. the way. Like, so I saw a side by side that somebody did of a still of uh, Toy Story, the original movie, yeah. and then a still of this game, and it and it, the game looks either the same or, or slightly better. better. Yeah. Yeah, it's ridiculous. So we finally hit that PlayStation yes. 2 moment. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that was what was really interesting. I had a chance to talk to Tetsuya Nomura at uh, D23, so cool. which like, just like <laughs> so brought that in. Um, which, uh, yeah, so you can you can find a lot of that coverage on the site. Um, but he was talking about the, the reason why he's most excited about Kingdom Hearts 3 is that the technology has finally caught up to where they can deliver all, on all those earlier promises. So we can ha they can have those worlds look like the worlds that mm -hmm. they're taken from. And additionally, you'll notice in the trailer, like you can have more uh, characters playing with Sora. So yeah, now they can have members. four. Yeah, yeah. crazy. Uh, they had Buzz and Woody in were your companions, and Donald and Goofy were still there. That's the dumbest sentence. You know but it's just <laughs> awesome that you don't have to choose and swap them. Yeah, out. I, yeah. I was like, oh wait, who do I love less? Yeah, Donald oh, or Goofy. Like, and yeah. I think they're going to be playing around with a lot of other um, different. Play styles as well, like you see in that uh, trailer that Sora is in, like a mech suit, basically, yeah, in the and like shop. a little Titanfall. Yeah. yeah, and so uh, we were talking a little bit about that and how there are supposed to be sort of like a event areas in each level that allow you to play around with different other play styles that are sort of unique to those yeah, worlds. Yeah, stand by for Toy Fall. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it looked like. Yeah, and you were jacking the mechs and everything. Yeah, like jumping between them. different ones yeah. and taking them over and yeah. they're just leaving. And they Which I mean, if yeah. you're like finally, 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 since that cliffhanger at the end of Kingdom Hearts 2 that people have been waiting for, okay, what comes next? And then every other game, like I just got annoyed. I didn't even play any of the side games. I was like, oh, another one that's not Kingdom Hearts 3 and yeah. now I'm so far removed from that franchise. Yeah because I've been yeah. waiting for like half my life. Um, but I, I think that it, what is is really excited exciting is that they will be able to make good on those and hopefully like have the fact that it's coming to all these next gen consoles really feel like a big, big update mm -hmm. since Kingdom Hearts. Oh, too. for sure. Me. Yeah. PlayStation 2 to yeah, yeah. like it, it's consoles it's crazy. Like, they skipped an entire <laughs> generation. Yep. Yeah, they uh, did. But also, like they still insist, like the logo is always still for Xbox One, even though they said you you pressed them on this that none of the other games have ever been on a Microsoft system, and they have these collections. Like in theory, you can play all of the old games via three collections, I think, uh, on PS4, but that just doesn't exist for Microsoft, and I feel like it would make sense for them to port oh, that over. I'll say. So yeah. here is what he said. He said, if we announce anything 
Switch, like 2.5 or 1.5 on yeah. on Xbox One, people will flip their lid yeah. <laughs> because they are, we already think that it's not going to come out in 2018. He's like, we will not do any of that until after this game comes out. And then when the game comes out, maybe. Just give that it makes sense. Blue they point. Just want to a port studio. Yeah. yeah put it <laughs> out now to done. ease the weight. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I think it would have made most sense if they had on I was like, hey, you didn't have a PlayStation growing up. Here's this entire collection yeah. on Xbox. Like, that would have been fantastic. But I kind of feel a little smart for not finishing Kingdom Hearts 2. Because like, <laughs> I restarted it twice in school and I never finished it. And now I'm like, yeah, I'm going to go replay it now. Yeah. And refresh my mind. <laughs> there you go. Ready to go. But that's like also nice that they give us. I wonder I if do, it's aged well. Yeah. I, <laughs> it like, has. I, I, it has. Okay. I like love and hate the 2018 thing because now we're all like, okay, now is the time. If you did, If you missed it. Start playing. You have until December 31st. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that minimum. But, but it's also like, what's going on with that Final Fantasy remake? <laughs> what's going on with Final oh, Fantasy yeah. VII? <laughs> oh, man. I'm playing that one right now. That's good. Oh, yeah. We were talking about it last week. Yeah. We can't talk about that. that no, that's, that's not, that's not here. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, so I have two questions for this yeah. panel with regard to Kingdom Hearts 3. One, was that trailer, was the D23 video enough? Do you need to see do you even want to see anything else of that game? Now you know, like, because Toy Story is awesome, could have been even more awesome as a surprise playing the game. Sure. Do you, do you even want to see anything, number one? And number two, do you believe the 2018 date? Well, I mean, like, revealing Toy Story first, I think, makes most sense because we already saw uh, Hercules stuff mm -hmm. and then going to... Then we saw Rapunzel. Right. Big Hero 6. Uh, and then they've announced Big Hero 6, but yes. we didn't see anything. Yeah. And then going to Toy Story. So, like, those are, I guess, not new enough to be... Aside from Big Hero 6, I think, which is kind of a little bit of a surprise because mm -hmm. I don't think it's as big, but I mean, that's really cool. Yeah. Um, I think they want to keep like the really big, cool places under wraps, and I hope they continue to do that and just show us stuff from the things they've yeah. already announced because I think what's one of the biggest exciting things is yeah. seeing the world revealed. I mean, and all of us are keep like, you know, you talked about how much Disney's changed since uh, 2002, I guess, when the series started. Yeah. And yes, mm -hmm. obviously, Pixar is a huge acquisition, but also Star Wars and Marvel. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, what are the, and yeah, Big Hero 6, I guess, is a Marvel property. Yeah. Um, but like, exactly. yeah, Marvel, we, Disney, like yeah. Disney animation. Yeah, yeah. But like, are we going to see a Star Wars world in this game? And would that be something that they would like reveal at Celebration? Or is that something that they'd reveal while you're playing the game? It's like, holy crap, we went to the Death Star. Our resident uh, Kingdom Hearts fan, Jonathan Dornbush, mm -hmm. thinks that those characters might come in via summons. I can see that. Where yeah. I guess like Simba yeah. was that yeah. example. Um I want to see a lot more story trailers. I think it's cool that they've leaned into the world and people have been asking about Pixar since Disney acquired Pixar. Mm -hmm. So that is great. And D23 was the perfect place to show that. Uh, but I really want to get a better sense of what the story is, especially since like so much of the tags at the end of the trailer have been like, yo, Sora wants to revive like Roxas, Roxas and yeah. can, can there be... Um, uh, uh, shadow and, and a nobody, nobody. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that was actually something I, I think <laughs> made it into our coverage. Um, it was really interesting too. I, I sort of asked Tatsuya Nomura like what his process was in determining which worlds to bring in, and he's like, we sort of start with what we want to do in each world. We figure out which franchises can do that. Like if we have a forest level and like yeah. a flying, I don't know. Yeah. And, and then we figure out which we think would be like the best way to convey them. And he said he it, they are going to try and lean on a lot more new worlds because he thinks people have been waiting. He, well, he thinks that people have been waiting so long for yeah. this game that you don't want to go back and replay like yeah. Aladdin or, yeah. or, right. or anything. Done those They're like the uh, Hoth levels of, of Kingdom Hearts. Yeah, Frozen 2 is due out in like what, 2019, 2020? So I think the same time Kingdom yeah. Hearts 3 is going to come out. <laughs> How convenient. I feel like the, 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 We didn't ask your second answer your second question. I feel like the whole, uh, like to, to go full inception on this, they just need to have one of the worlds be Wreck-It Ralph. Oh, and then through man. that, you just go to all these other video games and that's when the world just ends. That'd be too yeah. much. Yeah. 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 Everything just explodes. Everything. I know, I shuts still, off. I do love like the classic Disney world sure. though and I yeah. thought they sort of went through a lot of those. I don't, was there ever a Milan level? There was yes. in Kingdom Hearts 1. Kingdom Hearts 2. Yeah. Oh, was it 2? Yep, because okay. I yeah. played through that twice and I remember that <laughs> I never made through it yeah. again. I am clearly due for a refresh yeah. because I, every year I've been so indignant now I'm like, oh, I don't remember much yeah, after those after, games at all. After a decade, it's you're fine to forget things. Okay. Now I'm questioning because I'm like, wait, was it Kingdom Hearts 2? I'm pretty sure it was. I'm pretty sure it was. I can't remember the games I played a year ago. Yeah. Like, I, I, remember. I remember that I played. I don't know what day it is. Where are we? Right? I thought it was Saturday when we woke up, and I was like, "Oh no, yesterday was Monday." Yeah. So, Dang it. 2018, yes or no? I think yes. I'm going to be optimistic. Yes. Uh, no. No, Marty. <laughs> no. no way. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. What about you? 
Well, I don't know. I, I haven't been... Sounds like I've no. never played them, to be honest, because yeah. I, I was... Uh, they are I was on Xbox. All, yeah, I was covering. <laughs> I was all Xbox uh, specifically back then, and yeah, I um, so I haven't been keeping super tr- close track on it. But it's a big project. It's a huge scale. If they're if they won't get more specific than 2018, not super optimistic. But that's fine because you know I'm making a lot of jokes on this on this segment. But even we've been waiting this long. Polish it. Make it amazing. It's 20, if that's 2019, fine. There's mm-hmm. 7,000 other. Triple A games that are going to ship in the meantime. If this comes out as polished as something like Breath of the Wild, I don't think people will be yeah. upset. Yeah, that's the thing. Is like I just wish games would take more time. Like we look at Mass Effect Andromeda, and I'm just like, this game needed another year mm-hmm. or something. Like they were working so hard on it after it came out too. And like you can just tell like the quality difference between mm-hmm. the end and the beginning. Yeah. Like if you just like look how the first level is designed versus everything else you do, like it's just so much different. Yeah. It just annoys me that so much a process of game development is day one patch. Yeah. And I get it. I get it. Like the yeah. process of making a video game sounds absolutely miserable yeah. like like crunch just sounds like a mm. true true nightmare but i think that like relying on the fact that like oh essentially all our players will troubleshoot it for us and then we'll fix the problems like i think that's why breath of the wild blew so many people away is because it came out fully formed and yeah. yes there were some tweaks that needed to be done yeah. obviously like the switch needed its own tweaks um but but i i want more games to be able to take the time to yeah come out nintendo's like nintendo's one of the the rare exceptions that they're they're always it's done when it's done and when yeah. it's done it's the best it could be yeah. mario odyssey yeah. <laughs> can't wait yeah. can't wait uh all right finally <laughs> this week some new features being added to xbox live uh, I thought these were definitely of note. The Xbox Wire blog noting we've got custom gamer picks are up now, club profile oh, yeah. picks, uh, <laughs> backgrounds can be uploaded from your console or uh, through the Xbox app. Uh, also, this is sort of this is kind of a big deal, honestly. Uh, three people can co-stream from their console using Mixer, mm-hmm. which that's a real and that service. It's like I feel like the Xbox community knows about it, but. More people need to know about how good Mixer is. Yeah. They had it at E3, or was it? Yeah, it was E3, not in Expo. Mm-hmm. the same place. It's very confusing. <laughs> <laughs> very, very yeah. hard. Um, and I had no idea what it was. I was like, what is this? And why are the robots less cute? Then yeah. The robots less cute? <laughs> oh, there's a bunch of robots, yeah. and they weren't that cute. And I was uh, like, oh, but they're playing. Yeah, Beam was a better game. name, but they couldn't They couldn't get the trademark or copyright to uh, it in in certain territories yeah, so they had yeah. to, they chose to huh. switch it everywhere yeah, but they're gonna yeah they're gonna be at uh comic-con streaming from mixer as well but this this three person co-op stream is really interesting to me like that's sort of just like you can obviously do that using other services but the fact that like one of the it's things about mixer in. is it's so it's built in and it's simple yeah that's nice it's like idiots like me can use it which is great yeah i know i'm like i know so little about streaming games and I don't really watch it yeah. either because I cover a lot of TV and there's too much TV but also no one wants to You see don't stream game. people watching TV? No. <laughs> I think Twitch wants to move sure, toward yeah, that. Yeah. I think they yeah. did that with Power Rangers and Mr. Rogers. Yeah, next up yeah. next up the anime, my yeah. favorite. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I need to give a shout out to your shirt. <laughs> yeah. It's time. Can we get a close up on that? Okay, please? Um, like, oh, we got Yeah, you're like how do oh, I make this work around the microphone? That's Yuri the best shirt ever. They're yeah. wonderful. Anyway, yeah. yeah. Mixer. Yeah. So Mixer. Watch check it out. Yeah, a couple more things in this update as well. Uh, the arena feature has been updated so that Xbox One players can now create user-generated tournaments That's for cool. Killer Instinct, which is great. You can do that right from the box. So this is great news for for uh, Killer Instinct fans. That That's a game that, I'll tell you, that's a game as service that Microsoft, again, it's it's super, un- not enough people talking about how how uh, good of a fighter that oh, yeah. you know, it was it was fine when it launched and it was uh, it's like free to play but sort of not you could pay twenty dollars to get stuff but yeah they've just they've kept evolving that and now chugging along yeah. yeah it's just doing great and then the update also adds the ability to instantly sign into your console with a single press of the Xbox button on your controller uh, I, I auto, mine automatically signs me in so I don't mine know doesn't recognize that maybe that's because I still have connect <laughs> wow. mine, mine sees my dog and registers her as me so it's pretty cute though because it's like BB pops up and then it's like welcome Terry Short <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'll Aww. take it yeah. yeah okay I will say so while I do love seeing all these just continued clockwork like improvements to Xbox Live I, my constructive criticism would be I, I feel like Microsoft needs to do a better job of publicizing them. Mm-hmm. Like they put them on the Xbox Wire blog, but 
They How many on, people really see that? Like yeah. the homepage or something? Yeah, I sometimes. see them every now and then. You should have like trailers sometimes. for like the coolest stuff from the new updates yeah, that you just are, watch from your dashboard. That's the thing. I feel like it should uh, it should just fo- it should force a trailer when there's a big update. Like this is a big update, not necessarily every little one, yeah. Yeah. but just like here's what's new on your console. And of course, if you want, sure, just skip out of it. But they should let make sure every single person who owns the console sees all this neat stuff you can do so yeah. that people can actually take advantage yeah. of it. Yeah, I mean, we be see nice. like websites and services do that, right? Like, welcome back to this. Here are all the new things you can do. Yeah. Like, yeah. force you to go through that annoying little tutorial, but at least you know. At least yeah. you don't yes. miss it. Yeah, yeah, some of those tutorials are really helpful, too. Mm-hmm. Or at least I think they did that with their last really big update, because where you could do the, like, assisted controller thing, where you oh, could yeah. turn off, I forget exactly how the thing works. Yeah, yeah, I remember what you're talking about. Yeah, but they, it was sort of a weird thing. I mean, right now, it's hard to explain, and so that's right, one of those things. I can't even remember what it is, yeah. which is And so that's bad. why you do the tutorial but, of, like, yeah. here's the cliff notes of what this is and why it's cool and how to use it. Yeah, just all the new settings and stuff, and, like, it was helpful before. I was like, wow, that's so cool. I didn't know my Xbox could do that. Yeah. Um, yeah, oh, I so know because of the show. Keep, yeah, keep <laughs> I know eye. that's what I was gonna say. I was like, well, why do you need a trailer? Well, you can find out on <laughs> Podcast <laughs> Unlocked. Yeah, for all your updates. <laughs> We're happy to help, but yeah. I'm just saying. Uh, no, for sure. Yeah, like them publicizing that a little bit more would yeah. be nice. So yeah, ch- take a look for those uh, when you get your update on your Xbox One. It wraps it up. Not again. Not a ton of news this week. We got, but we do have Comic Con coming up. Uh, so we'll we'll cover whatever Xbox related shenanigans come out of that uh, on next week's show. For now, though, Marketplace, what can we spend our money on? It's in the dredges of summer, but there's still there are games out there. I'm going to go to Terry Schwartz, our guest, oh, goodness. to take us through the Marketplace report. What can we Ooh. spend our money on, Well, apparently Terry? in retail, nothing. Still nothing. <laughs> Just typical, keep an eye out for that update. Typical <laughs> July uh, retail release. Uh, in, in, uh, I'm going to totally butcher this, so forgive me, everyone. But in digital, uh, Runbo is free with your gold membership and $15 if you're not a member, but well, be a member. Be a member. That's, you're yeah. gonna, you're gonna then get you get free games. games. Anybody, anybody really watching this is probably a gold <laughs> so member. You're, yeah. So you're fine. Uh, you don't need that second uh, bit after the comma in the parentheses. <laughs> um, cereal cleaner is fifteen dollars. Have you looked at this, Marty? Oh, no, I forget what this is. But Wait, I is know this like viscera cleanup detail? Me. It go ahead, Miranda. I don't remember what it is. This thing. I just remember that it was really cool. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it is sort of Hotline Miami ish, but it's you're you're like a you're like a janitor cleaning up after after oh. some like serial killers come through okay. or something. Yeah. Like the premise was really good. I haven't played it. Yeah. Though, so. There was a, I think Mitch and I did a let's play of this game four years ago called Viscera Cleanup Detail. And it was like, it's a first person game where you're aboard like a derelict spaceship that just has blood and guts everywhere. So it's like, <laughs> it's like you came into a level after the, after the other player right. had just cleared it. Yeah. And you have a mop and a bucket and you have to like fill it up with water and like <laughs> mop amazing. up the blood and like squeeze it out into the bucket and everything. You can like, had a physics system so you could knock over your bloody water and it gets blood oh, all no. over it again. Yeah, that's great. Why do I? I've never heard of that. Sound, it was a, that it was so it wasn't fun. real. It was like one level. Oh, okay. Oh. It wasn't. This was a dream, Mitch and I. Had. Oh, yeah, a joint dream <laughs> that you okay. two had together. You went out and did peyote in the desert. <laughs> and that's like, yeah. Well, invite us next time. And then he was like, "What us. if there's a Battlefront too? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what if I wrote a Star Wars game? <laughs> but you're a Sith <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or, or, or Empire? Yeah. Empire. Uh, Dead Core is eight dollars." Uh, Iron Cryptical is $10 and next to this it says in all capital letters <laughs> I think you should have a doctor look at that which Iron I don't cryptical. get uh, I don't it just get that sounds reference. like a bad medical condition like something that's you, you have that in your say. eye okay you all right yeah. I thought it's I was like, missing oh, something I'm, I'm, I've got the Iron Cryptical like ooh yeah. um, this it. is a good deal oh, Minecraft Story Mode Season 2 Episode 1 $5 yeah. you cannot buy a coffee at Starbucks and, and buy this instead you get a full video game well at least Episode 1 hour and a half long video game yeah it'll last you longer than that coffee uh, Telltale, right? It's PC, but there's a Telltale Humble Bundle, which is fifteen dollars, and you get fifteen seasons. Of oh game wow, for that's insane! Bucks. They've and made stuff, too it's many incredible. games. They should take a break. So many, and, and we're about to should... get a bunch more announced. I think, and doesn't yeah. the Humble Bundle preview. stuff always goes to charity? Correct. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And you Love sort of and you organize bundle. where it goes to. Like oh, you can, you great. can sort of like you have a slider of like I want to go to here or here. This isn't on retail report or marketplace report, but I have the power, mm. so I will say a humble Please. indie bundle is like the best thing you can buy and do it every yeah. time they release one. They have a lot great. of awesome different bundles too, like they books do. and comics and mm-hmm. sometimes yeah. anime. It's humble, great. they're keeping it humble by being great. Um, <laughs> Moto GP seventeen is fifty dollars. Like that's your motorcycles. A, that's that's a lot of money, but if you like motorcycles, then it seems like a good investment. <laughs> um, I don't care about motorcycles. But you can catch Ryan talking about Teslas on his. <laughs> 
<laughs> podcast. And that's same, like, same difference. Cars. <laughs> um, hunting Simulator Day 1 Edition is $40. And Black... Track that bear. <laughs> yeah. No, leave the bear alone. <laughs> I, I hope you get got by the bears. <laughs> um, and Black the Fall is $15. I haven't heard so of that game, I, but that is a funny title. I am <laughs> reviewing this game right yeah. now. Oh. And it came... like uh, It's late because I just... We became aware of it, and our reviews editor Dan Stapleton was like, "You should take a look at this. It is. I mean, I'll have the full <laughs> analysis in the review, but let's just say it's an inside clone, yeah, to a extreme degree. Black the Fall as yeah. a title <laughs> means nothing, yeah. says nothing, yeah. and it just feels like it's like epic words you can put it, in titles. While I was it's playing the game, yeah. uh, and I. I, every time I'd be like, wait, what was that game called again? And I'd have to go look in the email to see that Dan <laughs> oh. Ford would be like, what is it? Oh, okay. Then that, and then go into Steam and like, okay, but that's what But inside is also just a word, like but, black the fall or just, worked. but it, it was, works. And yeah. and so now, and we all know what that is. And if it's even just a clone of inside, inside was perfect. And so. But you know what? Aaron lies the problem. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Review. All right. Well, that's a good plug. Um, the problem for Black the Fall, <laughs> yeah. that is. Not uh, inside. In the marketplace, something we all should be playing right now, but instead of recording podcasts unlocked, the Destiny 2 beta is live. Yes. Uh, Warlock Master Race. What are you guys going to be playing as? Oh, Warlock Master Race. Sorry. I mean, wow, that's, that was. <laughs> I got my. You were I got my. Definitive. So it's so funny because it, like, in all the entertainment videos that I do, every once in a while, someone in the comments will be like, Terry's wearing a warlock necklace. Like, did you notice? And I'm like, yep, warlock master race. I was race. just going to bring I, that up because at, the, at the May 18th gameplay reveal event. Yeah. And I was like, I noticed your, your, uh, your necklace. Yeah, I, uh, I saw Andrea Renee, uh, her husband John Drake bought her one at PAX Prime, but for Titan. And I, I texted my boyfriend immediately and was like, you cannot come home without buying me the warlock one of these. <laughs> Uh, and fortunately, he did come home and brought me the necklace. Yeah. And I've worn it every Relationship day. Relationship saved. I know. Thank goodness. No longer homeless. Um, I'm really excited to play the Destiny 2 beta, but cannot until after Comic Con because everything is timed to make yeah, me I'm, want to kill myself. Yeah. But, it's like but do Titan. It. Titan. Yeah. Yeah. Titan. Yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm not going to be able to touch the beta either, which kind of sucks. Yeah. Just I mean, we'll all be down there. Eventually. I Maybe mean, we'll have Sunday. If you come back Sunday early enough. Maybe. Yeah. You can play. That's Maybe. right. Yeah. Um, I've never played Destiny, so I'll well, find out. Luke Smith and everyone at Destiny 2 have told us through our IGN first that this is a great place for newcomers to start. Oh, so great. You'll be able to jump right in. Wonderful. Uh, also, good plug to our Destiny 2 IGN first content. I like that. Yeah. I'm going to be invited back after this. Destin, let me on fire team. So, to be completely honest, I thought the necklace is like a Twin Peaks thing because it almost looks like Twin Peaks. It um, it looks like something else that now I can't remember. But like the Warlock symbol does look like a lot of other like two I have like all the brand and like our our E three <laughs> IGN yeah. shirt. And I'm like, keep me higher. You're walking IGN. advertisement. This is great. Um, uh, Marty, <laughs> yeah. uh, Terry mentioned hunting simulator day one, and yeah. we're joking about about hunting Save bears. Bears alone. <laughs> There's your next. From the makers of uh, the, the cleanup edition, you get to be the bear. Ooh. Hunt and the, the hunters are in kind of, VR. Yeah. yeah, you get to just work with like the deer and like okay, you you skunk, you spray him, distract him, and I'm and I'm gonna go claw his face off. Well, how I'm about totally a hunting game from the animals' perspective? <laughs> the hunted, yeah, the yeah. Hunted. <laughs> the hunted. I could totally get That's a good title. I can get That's behind this. Title. Yeah, there's, the there's great outdoors. <laughs> call them the hunted. I think there's a game we play as like a. Maybe wolf or something, Ooh. or a Okami? pup. No, <laughs> yeah. well, oh, maybe it's a bunny. I don't know. There's some games Nintendo we play as the animal. I've been playing my own version of Hunting Simulator it's Day One called Stardew Valley, <gasps> um, which is I'm very late too, but it's very delightful. <laughs> and one day I will have time to play it again. Uh, July games with gold include Grow Up from July 1st to July 30th, my birthday, uh, mm. on Xbox One. That's when uh, you're gonna grow up. You add a year. Hey, plus year. one. We're with you, Marty. Uh, <laughs> Runbow, July 16th to August 15th, Xbox One. Kane and Lynch, two dog days, July 1st to July 15th. So I think it. you missed it. Um, sorry, I'm not even going to tell you what it was on. <laughs> uh, and Lego Pirates of the Caribbean, the video game, July 16th to July 31st on Xbox 360 and Xbox One. Good stuff. Ooh, did it. Thanks. That was yeah. fun. I was a bit scared. This wasn't as scary as GameScoop 20 questions. <laughs> I don't know how that's scary. You just I, ask a question. Like, if you watch that, you can see me, like, fully tense. And then and then it was a, an 
NES game released in the 80s, and I was like, well... <laughs> that narrows it down. <laughs> that narrows it down to something <laughs> Justin Davis and Sam Claiborne will figure out, and I didn't ask a single question after that. Cause, but but Sam got it. Ooh, spoiler. On question, ni- <laughs> <laughs> on question 19, and you can watch that podcast to find <laughs> out God, that is so was. specific. Yeah. yeah. Incredible. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, well, we do play a little trivia game, but it's it's a no stress. I'm once again. No, this is still game. stressful. Okay. Honestly, do you have the answer on here somewhere. No, I'm heavens no. <laughs> <laughs> so Tom from Kent in the UK asks, which of the following voice actors have not appeared in one of the last three games set in the Elder Scrolls universe? So he's specifically referring. You've got Oblivion. You've got Skyrim, and then Elder Scrolls Online as well, which has been, of course, a continually evolving game. They had the Morrowind expansion. They had a bear, too. <laughs> they had a bear as well. Absolutely. Had a bear. Yeah, incredible bear. So uh, which of these four has not a, a voice, been a voice in one of those games? Sean Bean, Patrick Stewart, Kate Beckinsale, or Kurt Russell? Quite the A-list lineup right there. Mm-hmm. Does anyone know immediately? Because I don't. I think I know. Marty's I think got, I know the look in, like, got that look in his eye. Process of elimination. Oh, exactly. what, what do you think, Marty? <laughs> wow. I guess Destin's not here, so I'm, I'm, I'm feeling good. Yeah, yeah. we've got Marty in the lead for the year at 10 points, oh. Destin at 8, Alana at 7, and uh, hopefully we'll get you two ladies on the board as well. That big old fat zero? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, one day. <laughs> one day. I might have the best, uh, if I get it right, I might have the best like The ratio? ratio. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. 100% of the time. Harry, you need to know this. You cover entertainment. These are four large actors. Uh, I true. haven't played Elder Scrolls Online or Oblivion. I know. Yeah, but you don't know the entire filmography, discography, <laughs> and filmography of these I actors? I think I remember Sean Bean being in one. One time I started playing Skyrim, and then I was like, why don't I play Fallout? And then I did that. <laughs> like, oh. Fair. <laughs> it's funny. I, I've said this before on this podcast, but and it, this this happened actually just, I had lunch with a, a friend of mine who works in the industry, and it's like, there, there is a weird thing where even though they're both Bethesda Game Studios mm-hmm. products, and they're both the same genre, first-person, open-world, endless role-playing games, people seem to either... Really prefer, I'm not saying like straight up don't like the other, but people tend to really lean either like you're a Fallout fan or you prefer the Elder Scrolls games. Yeah. I mean, it was really neat. One's like Miranda more Fallout? dystopian yeah. sci fi oh, yeah. and yeah. one's more fantasy, and I think that people sort of fall into this. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, really, a, I'm an Elder Scrolls person. Yeah, I like fantasy games. It's just, I was playing, I was like, wow, Fallout's so good. And then I played Fallout. <laughs> that's it. I was like, man, I haven't played that in a while. I was like, I had just picked up the game. I mean, I got it after it came out. Yeah. So do we all make a guess? Then. You're gonna, you're gonna, yeah. Each, so I'm gonna, so let, I'm gonna let Marty go last since he seems oh, the most confident. I don't want him to influence your you your thought process here. Uh, I'm Harry? gonna guess. I mean, there are three Brits and one American on here, but I'm still gonna guess Patrick Stewart. Okay, you go Patrick Stewart. Miranda. It's Kurt Russell. You going with oh, Kurt D. Russell? Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. Marty. I'm I'm also going with Kurt Russell. Yes! I know Sean Bean and Patrick Stewart have been in games. Oh well, yeah. And I then I'm a big Kurt Russell fan, and so I feel like I would have known if he was in mm-hmm. one of these games. Mm-hmm. So that's why I'm going with Kurt Russell. You two are in fact correct. It was okay. it was All Kurt right. Russell well, has not appeared in an Elder Scrolls. Yeah, back. Patrick Stewart was uh, he was Maybe. in Oblivion. He, okay. had a, he had a prominent he was role, king, right? Well, yes. Yeah. Well, in Oblivion, womp, right? Womp. But that's all right. All right, guys. <laughs> you're it's all right. You're you're tied with Mitch now for that zero points. You have Perfect. to come back. <laughs> I, to get a point. Sorry, it work here. <laughs> I know, I'm like, great. <laughs> I'm gonna add uh, Miranda to the scoreboard. Yay. Yay! All right, Miranda at one, and Destin's gonna be real mad that you got another point. <laughs> Marty. Good for doing your job. Eleven. <laughs> Good stuff. Uh, If you would like to help play our little trivia game here, send your Xbox-related trivia questions to us. The email address is unlocked at IGN.com. Please include four multiple-choice answers. Please note the correct one in your email, and I will happily choose a good one for next week's show. That wraps it up. So, uh, time to plug ourselves. Well, first, what, everything so we're up to. I will start with. Not like we you can follow me, or, or are we yeah. doing? Tw- okay, so you can follow me on Twitter at, at Terry underscore Schwartz. But because uh, I am not going to get to film um, Fire Team Chat while I'm up here, I also want you all to tweet at Destin <laughs> and tell him that you want me on Fire Team Chat. Fran too, if you feel like it. Uh, I don't know their Twitter handles uh, uh, offhand, but I also want to plug. Uh, I'm doing something super cool at Comic Con beyond just regular Comic Con. We're doing a panel called IGN's Game Changers and. 
uh, actually are going to have Cliffy B. And which, he doesn't like to be called I know, that. Clifford Blazinski, <laughs> <laughs> which is how I will introduce him Esquire. on the panel. Uh, also, Carlton Cuse, Gail Ann Hurd, and Jeff Johns yep. uh, are going to be gathered together for a panel and moderating, just like talking about changing trends in the industry. I'm super That's excited great. about you have it. You to ask Cliff about his dog game. I oh. will ask him about his dog. Very game. important to me. Yeah. Um, originally, Hideo Kojima was actually supposed to be on it, but unfortunately, I had to cancel his trip to Comic Con. So maybe next year, no. hopefully, we get to do it again. Uh, we are not going to be able to live stream the panel. It's happening Thursday night from five to six. So if you're there, please come check it out. It will be awesome. I'm really excited yeah. about it. Um, but we will be airing snippets of it during our Comic Con live stream, oh, uh, which you can find. And then we also will run the full panel on video on demand. After 24 hours, which is Comic Con's rule, uh, so yeah, plugging like that, I'm I'm really excited. And then obviously our Comic Con live stream is going to be on Twitter, just like E3. Wait, I have the dates memorized or the times memorized. I'm making this be the longest outro oh, ever. Yeah, uh, but this impressive. is all on brand. Someone is going to be really happy that I'm doing <laughs> this right now. Um, so Wednesday at Comic Con, we are going to be live from eight to nine for our pre-show, which is going to be exclusive to Twitter. Everything else is going to be streaming across all our platforms. So if you watch our E3 coverage, same deal with Comic Con on Thursday. Day, we're going to be three to seven. Friday also three to seven, and then Saturday, which is the biggest day of Comic Con, it's the Warner Brothers panel and the Marvel, Marvel. Studios yeah. panel, uh, so Justice League and Infinity War. That's going to be twelve to three and five thirty to eight thirty. If I'm wrong, just sorry. <laughs> I think <laughs> that's right, though. I'm wrong, pretty sure that's right. <laughs> Kingdom Hearts taught us numbers don't matter. Yeah, no, it's yeah. fine. Yeah. It's fine. Just watch. Miranda, what are you up to? <sighs> okay, well, you can find me on Twitter and pretty much everywhere else at Havoc Gross and Havoc with a K. And right now we Havoc are... Havoc like the physics middleware. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, it is. Right? Yeah. 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 It is just like yeah. that. That's exactly like what it was. <laughs> 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 um, but yeah, so we will be filming a Disney show. So check that out Monday through Friday at 930 or online at theigenshow.com. We're also on our YouTube, I think. Yep. Um, I'm also working on some anime things. I'm reviewing Tokyo Gold's live action movie, which is... You'll see. Yay um, anime. Yay anime. <laughs> yeah, so just kind of doing that. Um, mostly just focusing on the Disney show right now. It's because it's a big thing. Yeah. And I'm going to hopefully get a game review soon. And I'm very excited because <laughs> I haven't reviewed a game since Gravity Rush. <laughs> we, can't, we can't say what it is, but it's a game that this podcast would be interested in. Yes. So I'm very excited to talk about that Halo later. 6. <laughs> Surprise! Yeah. <laughs> Surprise! Out next week. You Scoop. play as a grunt. <laughs> yeah, you play as a grunt. Oh, my dream. <laughs> play that. Yeah. I love grunts. Grunts are great. They are the best. Yeah. Like, they, have great, be? they have great dialogue. Anyway. We need firefight mode to come back, but with the Gears 3 style mode where you could play as, as the enemy. 2011 yeah. summer, I only played Halo Reach firefight for like, <laughs> that's it. Like none of the other things. I'm terrible at PvP, but fi firefight, <laughs> firefight yeah. was my thing. I was like, it's, I can pop great. some heads. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it was incredible. Yeah. I'm, surprised, I'm still surprised it hasn't. Like Warzone's great, don't get me wrong, yeah. but I'm surprised that firefight has yet to return. Or had like a version of it in Destiny. Like I guess sort of Archon's Forge. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. It's not Maybe. the same. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Miranda knows. <laughs> Somewhere Destiny screaming. Or Destin screaming. I called him Destiny. <laughs> same difference. Well, I think he had chose that name for a reason. Just <laughs> <laughs> preternaturally it was, new. It was yeah. Destiny? Yeah. 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 <laughs> He'll answer to both. It's fine. Uh Marty? Uh, you can find me uh, at Mick Biggity with two G's and two T's. Uh, I will also be down at Comic Con uh, handling a bunch of games coverage. Uh, we're going to have stuff on Crackdown 3 and Shadow of War. Um, hopefully, some Xbox One X stuff. Uh, yeah, Mario, uh, some new Lego games, a bunch of stuff. So check that out. Excellent. Mm -hmm. I'm on Twitter at DMC underscore Ryan. Uh, the newest IGN Unfiltered show went up last week. That is with Warren Spector, who is uh, one of my favorite people in the games industry ever, because he made Deus Ex, System Shock, Ultima Underworld, Epic Mickey. Kind of a good resume. And yeah. he has a, a fantastic good. name. Yeah, Warren yeah, Spector. Warren Spector's cool. just Great. like the yeah. coolest, coolest name ever. He's like, that's like what you're, the boss who gives you quests in Deus Ex would be named. <laughs> would be, <it's> like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. JC, this is Warren Spector. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, it works. It's very yeah. dramatic. Yeah. And what else? Yeah, I guess that's I, yeah. I'm, my review of Black the Fall, the best name, should be live around the time that you hear or see this. So keep you know an eye on it. Called that yet? No, <laughs> I, I'm actually right at I'm right near the end of the game right now. I haven't finished it, and then I'm going to sit down and write afterwards. So I'm waiting to see what <laughs> you the deal fall is. a lot. Yeah, okay. <laughs> there's uh, there, there's some shadows, so there's some falling. Black. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Oh, okay. Right. Anyway, so you're I'll... also going to be one of like three people keeping IGN running while we're all yeah. scrambling Goodbye. at Comic Con. Yeah. <laughs> that makes me important. <laughs> that makes you important. <laughs> all right. Uh, for Marty, mm-hmm. Miranda, and the wonderful debut appearance. On brand appearance of <laughs> Eric Schwartz. Uh, I'm Ryan. This was Unlock 305. Thank you all so much. And we will return with more Xbox goodness next week.